Bonjour à tous. Today at sundown marks the beginning of Ramadan. For many Muslim Canadians, the coming month will be different than normal, with iftar online and virtual Friday prayers. But that won't change what this special time is all about. Generosity, compassion, and service to others. Across the country, Muslim Canadians are on the front lines of the fight against COVID-19 as nurses, doctors, and essential workers. So thank you, and Ramadan Mubarak. Aujourd'hui, les musulmans canadiens vont souligner le début du Ramadan. Le mois qui vient de, ne se déroulera pas comme d'habitude. Mais les valeurs de compassion et de générosité qui sont au cœur de cette tradition sont plus importantes que jamais. Partout au pays, les musulmans canadiens sont aux premières lignes de la lutte contre la COVID-19, des médecins, des infirmières, des travailleurs essentiels. Merci et Ramadan Mubarak. This will be another difficult day for many families and communities across the country. We're all thinking about those in Nova Scotia who are grieving the loss of loved ones, friends, and neighbors. Yesterday, I spoke with the families of some of the people we lost. They shared stories about their loved ones and their dreams and plans. In the face of such tragedy, their strength is remarkable. I spoke also uh, with RCMP members from the area, and on behalf of all Canadians, I thank them for their service. And I spoke with some local mayors as well to express my condolences. For Torontonians, I know it'll be a hard day as well, as we remember the victims of the van attack on Young Street two years ago. Together we mourn, and together we heal. Because just as Canadians were there for each other two years ago, we're there for each other today. Across the country, people are hanging tartan, blue ribbons and scarves from windows to honour those who died. With acts of kindness and donations, people are standing with families who are grieving. And tomorrow, with the virtual vigil, we will all have the chance to show the people of Nova Scotia that they are not alone. Pour les gens de la Nouvelle-Écosse, aujourd'hui sera une autre journée difficile. Face à une telle tragédie, ils font preuve d'une force incroyable. Et les citoyens de Toronto vivent également une journée difficile. Aujourd'hui, on se souvient des victimes de l'attentat per perpétré le long de la rue Young, il y a deux ans. Ensemble, nous vivons ces deuils et ensemble, on va guérir ces blessures. These are tough times, but there is reason to hope. When it comes to COVID-19, what we're doing is working. And to continue on the right track, we need to be thinking not just about the next weeks, but about the next months. We need medium-term and long-term solutions. On that front, I can announce today that we're taking another step forward. We're putting in place an additional $1.1 billion for a national medical and research strategy to address COVID-19. This plan has three pillars. Research on vaccines and other treatments, supports for clinical trials, and expanding national testing and modelling. Let me start with the first pillar on research. Under this plan, we're investing close to $115 million for research into vaccines and treatments being developed in hospitals and universities across the country. This is on top of the funding we've already provided to support vaccine development in Canada. The second pillar of the plan is to make sure that once we have potential vaccines and treatments, we can test a wide range of options. Under this plan, we will invest over $662 million for clinical trials led by Canada. A vaccine is the long-term solution to this virus, but these drugs will take months to develop, test, fabricate and roll out. So until we have something ready, we need to control the spread of the virus. And that's where the third pillar of this plan comes in. We're investing $350 million to expand national testing and modelling of COVID-19. This includes creating the COVID-19 Immunity Task Force. The task force 
will operate under the direction of a leadership group which will include Dr. David Naylor, Dr. Catherine Hankins, Dr. Tim Evans, Dr. Teresa Tam, and Dr. Mona Nienor. We are bringing together top health experts and scientists from leaning institutions across the country. Canada's best and brightest will be working on serology testing, blood testing, to track and understand immunity to COVID-19. They'll be looking at key questions like how many people beyond those we've already tested have had COVID-19, whether you're immune once you've had it, and if so, how long that lasts. Over two years, we will be testing at least a million Canadians as a part of this study. The findings of the research will help with everything from rollouts of a potential vaccine to determining which public health measures are most effective going forward. We will get valuable data, including disaggregated data, to understand the impact on vulnerable populations. And we will also leverage new and existing lab capacity for research. The better we understand this virus, its spread and its impact on different people, the better we can fight it and eventually defeat it. While this vital research is happening, we're also staying focused on what we can do right now to control COVID-19 and get back to normal as soon as possible. Testing is key. We've now reached 20,000 tests daily, almost double where we were earlier this month. But testing must increase even further before we can reopen and restart our normal activities as a country. You've been doing your part by staying home and practicing physical distancing. It's working, and we can't afford to waste this progress. Aujourd'hui, j'annonce qu'on met en place une stratégie médicale et de recherche d'une valeur de 1.1 milliard de dollars pour lutter contre la COVID-19. Le premier volet de cette stratégie porte sur les vaccins et les traitements. On a investi près de 115 millions de dollars dans la recherche sur les vaccins dans les hôpitaux et dans les universités à travers le pays. Ça s'ajoute au fonds qu'on a déjà alloué pour développer des vaccins ici au Canada. Le deuxième volet de notre stratégie consiste à s'assurer que lorsqu'on aura des vaccins et des traitements potentiels, on pourra tester plusieurs options d'utilisation possibles. On va donc investir près de 662 millions de dollars dans les essais cliniques. Et le troisième volet, c'est d'investir dans les tests pour modéliser la maladie. On est en train de mettre sur pied le groupe de travail sur l'immunité face à la COVID-19. Ce groupe de travail sera dirigé par le docteur David Naylor, la docteur Catherine Hankins, le docteur Tim Evans, avec l'appui de la docteur Tam et de la docteur Nimmer. Ils vont coordonner des tests sanguins qui vont nous aider à retracer le virus et à mieux comprendre comment on peut s'immuniser contre la COVID-19. Les conclusions de la recherche vont nous aider à faire plusieurs choses, que ce soit de rendre un vaccin accessible ou de déterminer quelles mesures de santé publique sont les plus efficaces et doivent être adaptées. Pendant qu'on mène cette recherche vitale, on continue de réfléchir à ce qu'on peut faire en ce moment pour contenir la COVID-19 et revenir à une vie normale aussi vite que possible. Les tests, c'est ce qu'il y a de plus important. On est rendu à environ 20 000 tests par jour à l'échelle du pays. Mais on doit continuer d'augmenter notre capacité à tester avant que la vie reprenne son cours. Right now, we're seeing terrible tragedies in long-term care facilities across the country. This is unacceptable. If you're angry, frustrated, scared, you're right to feel this way. We can do better. We need to do better. Because we are failing. Our parents, our grandparents, our elders, the greatest generation who built this country. We need to care for them properly. Canadians need to pull together. There have been requests for military assistance by both Ontario and Quebec, which of course we will be answering. Our women and men in uniform will step up with the valour and courage they have always shown. In the short term, we will be there with support so that provinces can get control of this situation. But this is not a long-term solution. In Canada, 
we shouldn't have soldiers taking care of seniors. Going forward, in the weeks and months to come, we will all have to ask tough questions about how it came to this. We will all have to do more to get through this terrible situation. En ce moment, on voit des tragédies épouvantables dans les CHSLD à travers le pays. C'est inacceptable. Si vous êtes fâché, frustré ou inquiet, vous avez raison de vous sentir comme ça. On doit faire mieux. Parce qu'on laisse tomber nos parents, nos grands-parents, nos aînés, les membres de la plus grande génération qui ont bâti notre pays. On doit s'occuper d'eux comme ils le méritent. Le Québec et l'Ontario nous ont demandé l'aide de l'armée. Ces demandes, c'est ces demandes qu'on va accepter. Nos militaires iront prêter main forte comme ils le font toujours. Mais il ne s'agit pas d'une solution à long terme. Au Canada, ce n'est pas nos militaires qui devraient prendre soin de nos aînés. Au cours des prochaines semaines et des prochains mois, on va devoir examiner comment on en est arrivé là. On va tous devoir faire plus pour traverser ces situations qui est absolument terrible. Tout le monde y met du sien pour traverser cette période. On fait tous partie de la même équipe. Pendant que nous faisons notre part, je sais que tout le monde va faire sa part. C'est ensemble qu'on va s'en sortir. C'est ensemble qu'on va revenir en force. Merci.